The Emmys were handed out last night. Americans were glued to their televisions watching uh, football, not the Emmys, watching the Rams beat the Browns. <laughs> This was the lowest rated Emmys ever by a lot. They're saying if things get any worse, they may have to add themselves to the in memoriam reel. They <laughs> I was at the uh, Emmys last night. Guillermo and I were there. Yeah. And for me, more than anything, the Emmys is a chance to learn what shows my wife has been secretly watching without me. And, uh, <laughs> it's like, oh, he's great. I'm like, oh, really? How do you know that? <laughs> what time did you get home last night, Guillermo? <laughs> One o'clock. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. It's even later from Guillermo, by the way, has some exclusive interviews with the winners from the Emmys, moments from now. I always look forward to that. You know, Game of Thrones won the most Emmys of any show this year. They won 12, including the big one, Best Drama. And so many of the awards last night went to foreigners. There were so many British people on stage. I didn't know if I was watching the Emmys or the Downton Abbey movie. It was really... <laughs> Phoebe Waller-Bridge was... The big winner, she won for her acting, writing, and best comedy. She is something else. She created uh, two shows, Fleabag, Killing Eve. She's writing the next James Bond movie. She must really type fast, is all I can figure. <laughs> the Emmys rotate from network to network every year. So this year, they're on Fox, and next year, they'll be on ABC. And Fox tried to do things differently. They didn't have a host. And instead of a uh, red carpet, they had a purple carpet, which looked like they uh, skinned Barney and made a rug out of him. It was real <laughs> As far as the ratings go, they definitely missed some chances to make the show more interesting. I mean, it, you had three Game of Thrones cast members nominated in the same category. Why not have them fight it out on stage? That's a no-brainer to me. The award for most interesting performance on the pre-show last night went to one of the stars of Empire, Terrence Howard, who apparently has a lot more on his mind than just doing TV shows. You made huge headlines when you said, after you complete these 15 episodes of Empire, you gotta walk away for a while or forever? For good. I'm, I'm, I mean, everyone keeps trying to tell me, don't say it's forever, but I've spent 37 years pretending to be people so that people can pretend to watch and enjoy what I'm doing when I've made some discoveries in my own personal life with the science that you know, Pythagoras was searching for. I was able to open up the flower of life properly and find the real wave conjugations that we've been looking for for 10,000 years. Why would I continue, you know, walking on water for tips when I've got an entire generation to teach a whole new world? You know, I was thinking that same thing myself last night. On the... I'm spinning my wheels here. I could be, I could be helping Pythagoras open the flower of life. <laughs> Here's a more from Terrence Howard. That, that's a big remark. Yeah. What, what, what do you intend to, to do? Well, let me put it this way. All energy in the universe is expressed in motion. All motion is expressed in waves. All waves are curved. So where does the straight lines come from to make the platonic solids? There are no straight lines. On Tuesday, when I receive my star, I'm going to be able to prove that gravity is only an effect and not a force. I'm putting something on YouTube really? where I will build the planet Saturn without gravity and build the Milky Way galaxy wow. without gravity. Did you on also Tuesday. say you're getting your star? On yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> getting, also getting a star. <laughs> not on the Walk of Fame. He's going to be... He's building an actual star. <laughs> I have to believe somewhere out there, Jussie Smollett's like, well, 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 maybe I'm not the craziest guy on Empire. <laughs> this, this was kind of unbelievable. There was a mix-up during the In Memoriam montage last night. Oh, look at this. OK, so that man is not Andre Previn. That is another conductor, a gentleman named Leonard Slatkin, who is the music director laureate for the Detroit Sympathy, Sympathy Orchestra and is, uh, is alive. Uh, I say Sympathy Symphony Orchestra. And apparently he was just as surprised as anyone to find out that he passed away. So we tracked him down. He's in Ireland right now. And joining us live, I think, please welcome the newly resurrected Leonard Slatkin. Hello, Leonard. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. <laughs> now, I guess my first question is, are you dead right now? Uh, some people might wish that, <laughs> especially among my conductor colleagues. But no, I was really quite shocked to learn that in 
giving their best to Andre Previn, they wound up giving their worst to me. <laughs> Where were you when you found out uh, you'd passed away? Uh, I woke up about four in the morning here in Ireland, and I got up to follow the baseball scores, because that's one of my passions. And I turned on the computer, and all of a sudden I see, oh, I know Andre was gone a few months ago, and apparently now me too. <laughs> Was anyone worried when they saw this, when they saw you in the montage? There were a flood of messages that had come in, <laughs> and I kept wondering, why are they sending me messages if they think I'm gone? <laughs> You're like Tom Sawyer and Huck Finn, you know? You knew Andre Previn, correct? I knew him very well. My whole family has been involved in the music business, in Hollywood in particular. And Andre, great jazz pianist, fantastic film composer, conductor. He did it all. He was a great gentleman. And I was just so sad that he couldn't be remembered the way he should be. Right. By, what do you think yeah. he would think about uh, this mix-up? You know, they talk about people spinning in your graves. Andre's not spinning. He's laughing all the okay. way. That's <laughs> well, you might be the only person who's ever seen his own in memoriam. So uh, that's something. Not quite. No. I had that happen to me a few years ago. What? The great film critic Roger Ebert. Wow. The great film critic wow. Roger Ebert had me go to the Chicago Sun Times <laughs> about 25 years ago, and he said, Would I like to see my obituary? I said, Sure. It's really sad when you see this and realize your whole life gets boiled down to a couple of paragraphs. And you realize that everybody's in a newspaper's database just waiting for us to kick off. Yeah. <laughs> It's even sadder. Most people aren't even in the deba in the newspaper's de database. At least you're in the database, right? Well, yeah, I'm, I hope it's still the case. By the way, in case you needed to know, yeah. this is the Irish newspaper, The Independent. Yeah. There is the date. Oh. And for those who follow it, right underneath, uh, you need to know that yesterday Scotland defeated Ireland in the World Rugby Championships in Tokyo. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sure things are pretty glum around there. What with you dying and that happening and all. <laughs> I know. A memorial service will be in about 15 years. All right. Well, thank you so much. I hope it's even longer than that. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> so that's weird. If you like that video, click the subscribe button, but only if you're ready for commitment.